The Americas, the final frontier in humanity's great migration, stand as a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of the first people to call this land home. Imagine a time when the Arctic was an unforgiving expanse of ice and snow, yet it was here that a small group of determined explorers carved out an existence, braving conditions few could endure. These early ancestors of Native Americans, separated from the rest of humanity for as long as 15,000 years, adapted in extraordinary ways to thrive in this frozen world. As they gazed southward, what awaited them was a land of unimaginable diversity and scale, a continent stretching over 15 million square miles, filled with sweeping plains, dense rainforests, towering mountain ranges, and untamed rivers. Their journey to conquer this vast, untamed wilderness began after centuries of survival in the barren lands just south of the Arctic Circle. This was not just migration. It was a grand odyssey of discovery and adaptation. During their time in the north, global temperatures plummeted and the weather became harsher. Yet instead of fleeing, these remarkable people stayed, enduring and evolving in isolation. Over thousands of years, they developed unique physical and cultural traits that would later define the first Americans. These adaptations are still visible today in their descendants, a living legacy of their resilience and connection to the land. So when did these pioneers set foot in the Americas? While the exact timeline remains uncertain, most scientists agree that the first wave of migration happened around 15,000 years ago. These early settlers were not just survivors, they were innovators, adventurers, and the foundational ancestors of all Native American peoples. Their story is one of courage, endurance, and an unbreakable bond with the land they would one day call home. The journey of the first Americans began with an extraordinary sub-Arctic odyssey across the dry land of Beringia, a vast region once bridging Siberia and Alaska. This epic migration, etched into the very DNA of Native peoples, marked the start of their story, a story that began in the harshest of climates and conditions. Unlike Europe and Asia, where hominins like Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and Denisovans thrived for nearly two million years, Few ventured north of 55 degrees latitude, where today's Ireland and Kazakhstan lie. It was a frontier that demanded unparalleled resilience, skill, and innovation. Why was this land so forbidding? Beyond the bone-chilling cold, the scarcity of game made survival a daily struggle. Hunting at higher latitudes was a daunting task. The prey was scattered, and tracking them required both patience and ingenuity. Yet, our direct ancestors, modern humans, succeeded where others faltered, venturing into northern Eurasia and adapting in ways no species before them had. To endure these unforgiving conditions, tailored clothing became essential, a testament to their ingenuity. Imagine garments carefully crafted to shield against the biting Arctic winds. They also relied on snares, ingenious automated traps that worked tirelessly day and night to capture prey over vast territories. Remarkably, these same tools are still used by modern Arctic communities today a living link to the survival strategies of their ancient predecessors. The archaeological evidence speaks volumes. By 45,000 years ago, human activity had reached northern Eurasia, pushing boundaries once thought impassable. But it is in the Arctic Circle, at a site dating back 32,000 years, that the true depth of human perseverance shines through. This is where the journey of Native American ancestors took root, a journey that would eventually lead them across Beringia and into a new world, where they would forge a legacy of strength, ingenuity, and connection to the land that still resonates today. Archaeologists have uncovered a treasure trove of artifacts along the banks of the Yona River in Siberia, at the western edge of what was once the vast land bridge of Beringia. These discoveries provide a fascinating glimpse into the lives of the ancient people who thrived in this harsh environment. Among the finds are hundreds of carefully crafted stone and bone tools, including sewing needles, a testament to their ingenuity and adaptability. These early inhabitants relied on the land for survival, hunting birds, woolly rhinos, and reindeer. Arctic hares were also likely caught for their fur, as seen in the practices of modern Arctic communities. Yet life in Beringia was not solely about survival. The discovery of ivory and bone beads reveals that these people had time and creativity to engage in artistic pursuits. Decorated ivory strips, perhaps used as hairbands, and shallow ivory dishes, possibly for ritual purposes, 
suggest a rich cultural life interwoven with spiritual and aesthetic expression. Adding a human touch to these artifacts are two ancient teeth belonging to children who lived thousands of years ago. Remarkably, DNA extracted from these teeth reveals that these children were related to the ancestors of modern Native Americans, though they were not direct progenitors. What truly astonished researchers was the genetic diversity among these individuals, hinting at a surprisingly large and thriving community. Estimates suggest that the Yona site may have supported more than 500 people, a striking revelation for a region so distant from the heart of human activity during the late Stone Age. The Yona River site stands as a vivid reminder of the resilience and creativity of those who came before. It paints a picture of a people who, even in the most unforgiving of environments, not only survived but also found ways to celebrate life, art, and community, a legacy that resonates deeply with their Native American descendants today. The discovery at the Yona site is nothing short of extraordinary. One might expect that a population living in such a remote and challenging environment during the late Stone Age would be small, isolated, and possibly inbred. Yet, the evidence tells a different story. The people of the Yona site were a strong and healthy community, thriving in ways that defy expectations. Their resilience points to a network of migration into and out of Beringia, which helped maintain genetic diversity in the region. Despite Siberia and the Americas being connected by a dry land bridge during this time, there is no concrete evidence that these people moved further east into North America. Instead, they seem to have stayed in Beringia for generations, perhaps finding stability in this liminal space between continents. This all changed during the last glacial maximum, approximately 30,000 years ago. As extreme cold engulfed the planet, North America became cloaked in massive ice sheets, effectively sealing off the passage from Beringia into the New World. For 15,000 years, this icy blockade persisted, halting any potential migration and forcing the people of Beringia to endure even greater isolation. By the time the ice began to retreat and the route reopened, the Yona site had been abandoned. Other tribes, however, seemed to have endured within Beringia, adapting to their harsh surroundings. Geneticists have since uncovered subtle but crucial differences between the DNA of East Asians and Native Americans, differences that date back thousands of years before the first humans set foot in the Americas. This discovery, made just a decade ago, offers new insights into the genetic journey of Native American ancestors. In an attempt to explain these genetic distinctions, researchers have proposed a groundbreaking solution. During their time in Beringia, these early populations were isolated long enough to develop unique genetic traits. This period of separation forged the genetic foundations of the Native American peoples, creating a legacy of adaptation and survival that continues to shape their descendants today. The ancestors of Native Americans may have endured a profound isolation in the land of Beringia during one of the harshest chapters in Earth's climatic history. Around 30,000 years ago, as temperatures plummeted, vast polar deserts in Eurasia and towering ice sheets in North America effectively trapped these early people, cutting them off from the rest of humanity. This period of separation, lasting as long as 15,000 years, allowed their unique genetic identity to emerge, a legacy still carried by Native Americans today. This incubation period, as anthropologists call it, remains a topic of intense debate. Some researchers believe it began later, around 24,000 years ago, when conditions in Beringia reached their most severe. They argue it lasted no more than 9,000 years. But even so, the isolation was long enough for random genetic drift to shape a population distinct from any other on Earth at the time. But where exactly did this period of isolation take place? On this question, the scientific community is divided. One school of thought suggests that the ancestors of Native Americans migrated further south as the climate worsened, finding refuge near Lake Baikal, situated at roughly 53 degrees north in modern-day Siberia. Evidence supporting this theory includes the discovery of DNA from a boy who lived in the region 24,000 years ago showing a connection to the Native American founding population, though he was not a direct ancestor. On the other hand, many researchers argue that Beringia itself was the cradle of this genetic transformation. 
The isolation of this vast and forbidding land, they contend, provided the perfect conditions for a population to remain in place for millennia. Intriguingly, genetic evidence from other mammals, such as elk and brown bears, shows similar patterns of isolation and adaptation during the last glacial maximum. This debate underscores the resilience and ingenuity of Native American ancestors, who not only survived, but thrived in one of the most inhospitable environments on the planet. Their story, rooted in both hardship and innovation, continues to be pieced together through the discoveries of modern science, revealing a legacy as vast and enduring as the land they once inhabited. As the Earth's climate cooled during the last glacial period, global sea levels plummeted, dropping by as much as 100 meters, 330 feet, below today's levels around 28,000 years ago. This dramatic shift unveiled vast stretches of land, creating what is now known as Beringia. Thousands of square miles of new terrain emerged in south-central Beringia, offering a lifeline to the ancestors of Native Americans who would later migrate into the New World. Before 30,000 years ago, climate models and pollen records paint a surprising picture. Parts of the subarctic were humid and relatively mild. This unusual warmth, likely driven by Pacific currents that brought warm air into the region, created an environment rich with life, an oasis in an otherwise frozen and unforgiving landscape. While much of the subarctic became increasingly cold and arid, south-central Beringia stood out as a rare and expansive refuge. This habitat was unparalleled in scale and significance during the last glacial maximum, a period of peak glaciation. No other place on Earth experienced such a dramatic expansion of viable land, making Beringia a critical stepping stone for human survival and migration. It was here that the resilience and adaptability of the first Native American ancestors shone as they thrived in one of the most remarkable environments ever shaped by the Earth's climatic extremes. At the height of the last glacial maximum, Beringia became a refuge for tens of thousands of people, sustained by its vast size and surprisingly favorable climate. However, life in this subarctic haven came with serious challenges. For anyone living above 46 degrees north, the limited winter sunlight makes it nearly impossible to synthesize enough vitamin D naturally. Even spending long hours outdoors wouldn't provide sufficient ultraviolet light exposure. While adults could compensate by consuming vitamin D-rich foods like oily fish, nursing infants faced a much higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. This deficiency could weaken their immune systems and lead to skeletal problems, threatening their survival. Yet the Native American ancestors thrived, adapting to these harsh conditions over millennia of isolation in Beringia. Genetic studies reveal that many modern Native Americans carry unique variants of the FADS gene family. These variants enhance the body's ability to process a diet rich in protein and fatty acids, exactly the kind of diet that subarctic communities relied upon. These adaptations, likely shaped by natural selection, allowed Native American ancestors to survive and flourish in one of the most challenging environments on Earth. For years, the period of isolation in Beringia was viewed as a mere prologue to the greater story of Native American history. But today, researchers are piecing together a richer, more nuanced picture of life during this time. The true journey began around 15,000 years ago, when the ice sheets melted, reopening the passage into the Americas. A small, genetically homogeneous group ventured south, marking the beginning of an epic migration that would lead to the creation of diverse and thriving Native American civilizations. By 14,600 years ago, the original Native American population had split into two distinct subgroups. The first, known as Ancestral B, primarily stayed in the far north of North America, where many of their descendants still reside today. The second group, Ancestral A, was more adventurous, giving rise to the Clovis culture, one of the most renowned prehistoric cultures in North America. Over time, the Ancestral A population migrated further south, spreading into Central and South America. However, this is only part of the story. Researchers have uncovered evidence that during the long period of isolation in Beringia, the population fragmented into multiple subgroups. This genetic divergence suggests that several unique groups of people migrated into the Americas, each contributing to the rich diversity seen among Native American populations today. 
One of the most compelling discoveries comes from the bones of two children buried in Alaska around 11,500 years ago. Their DNA links them to the ancient Beringians, a subgroup that branched off from the main Beringian population about 22,000 years ago. Remarkably, these subgroups remained genetically distinct for thousands of years, avoiding intermixing even while inhabiting the same vast region. Interestingly, this pattern of fragmentation is mirrored in Beringia's plant life during the last glacial maximum, where tree populations adapted to isolated microclimates. This parallel suggests that the human populations in Beringia may have been shaped by similar environmental forces, though there is no evidence that the ancient Beringians had a lasting impact on the broader Native American gene pool. Even as the ice sheets receded, they lingered in parts of Beringia, keeping the region partially isolated. Eventually, when the ice fully melted, Native American populations from farther south pushed back into Alaska. Yet some Beringian subpopulations may have split off earlier during this incubation period and ventured in entirely new directions. One intriguing clue comes from the genetic makeup of mixed populations in Mexico, which reveals a unique signature not found in neighboring groups. Researchers theorize that around 9,000 years ago, their ancestors interbred with a mysterious subgroup originating in Beringia about 25,000 years ago. This enigmatic group, referred to as Population Y, adds another layer of complexity to the story of Native American origins. Population Y is thought to have connections to even earlier human populations, further enriching the diverse ancestry of Native peoples across the Americas. Genetic research has uncovered a fascinating mystery. Members of the Sauru and Karatiana ethnic groups in the Amazon carry genetic markers that connect them to indigenous Australians. This surprising link has led scientists to propose the existence of Population Y, a prehistoric group from East Asia related to the first Australasians. According to this theory, Population Y contributed genetic material to the New World through migrations across Beringia and also played a role in the ancestry of Australasians. However, the story is far from straightforward. Ancient DNA from Beringia and North America has so far shown no signs of Population Y, raising questions about its existence. The puzzle deepened with the discovery of an individual who lived in eastern Brazil 10,400 years ago, whose DNA showed a connection to Australasian populations. This person was part of the ancestral lineage of Native Americans, descendants of those who first arrived in South America. Geneticists suggest that Population Y likely reached South America and interbred with Native Americans there as no Population Y DNA has been found in ancestral remains from North America. This raises the possibility that the first people to enter South America might have included a subgroup of Population Y migrants. These early inhabitants, such as those who lived at Monte Verde in Chile approximately 14,200 years ago, may have left a genetic legacy that persists today in a small number of Amazonians. This theory challenges the traditional understanding of South America's population history, revealing it to be far more complex than previously believed. The genetic traces of Population Y underscore the incredible diversity of the people who shaped the Americas, adding a new dimension to the story of Native American ancestry. Around 15,000 years ago, a small but determined group of Beringians stood at the threshold of a new world, ready to shape the future of the Americas. Their journey would set the stage for incredible achievements that still resonate today. These early pioneers would one day give rise to cultures capable of creating the breathtaking Nazca lines in the deserts of Peru, a masterpiece of art and astronomy etched into the earth. They would discover and cultivate cacao in the lush forests of Ecuador, sparking humanity's enduring love affair with chocolate, a gift still cherished across the globe. In Mexico, their descendants would lay the foundations for some of the most advanced civilizations in human history, including the Maya, Aztec, and Olmec, whose contributions to mathematics, architecture, and agriculture transformed the ancient world. The genetic legacy of these remarkable people endures, carried by Native American populations today. It serves as a living testament to their resilience, creativity, and profound connection to the land. Their story is not just a tale of survival, but of flourishing, innovation, and cultural brilliance, a legacy that continues to inspire and define Native American identity in the modern world.